participants in the discussion on roots of prejudice are the delegates from Israel, the Gold Coast, Union of South Africa, Jordan, North, and Japan. We hear first from Marlene Root of the Union of South Africa and Fifi Hesse from the Gold Coast. I have spent most of my energy during the last three months trying to figure out what had been happening to me since I've been here. And quite frankly, I still don't quite know. But one thing I do know, a person can change more in three months than I've ever thought it possible. Sometimes I can't identify myself with the Marlene that left Johannesburg three months ago to represent the Union of South Africa at this forum. I think all of us have had the same feeling to some extent, Marlene. Well, you see, when I got on that Pan-American plane, I had never before met a Negro on terms of equality. And I was so excited on the plane and thinking and wondering about how your country would be that I never gave it a second thought that I might be picking up some other African delegates. When we put down at Accra, very fortunately, the American uh, cultural attaché came to me and asked me whether I would like to meet the delegates from Nigeria and Gold Coast, this being Minjaba and Fifi. To be quite honest, I was scared stiff because I knew how they regarded white South Africans and what they had been saying about us in the newspapers. I was scared too, but I decided to be prepared for anything and play it the way she did. Mali offered her hands first. By the time we got to Lisbon the next afternoon, the three of us were sitting on two seats, finishing an enormous box of chocolates I had been given before I left home. We couldn't stop talking for one minute. And I'll never forget that exciting moment when we flew over New York at 5 a.m. Christmas morning with all the lights lit up. It was very exciting. <laughs> at Idlewild, we got the first feeling of what this forum would be like. We were looking for lost luggage, waiting and helping each other. Then I didn't quite know how very difficult this three months would sometimes be for me. I wonder if you realize how hard things have been for Marlene here. You are still in character, Fifi. For when things have been hardest for me, Fifi's most often been the person that understood me best. What I can't understand is, if Fifi understands what I mean when I explain apartheid, why don't you? Why don't you give it another try? Thank you. But... Um, I would like to explain the policy of apartheid which my government in South Africa follows. This apartheid is simply the Afrikaans word meaning separateness. This policy isn't based on the differences in skin color. It arises from the basic differences between two peoples whose cultures, religious habits and state of civilization is so far apart and also from the fact that the power is in the hand of a small group. In theory, apartheid aims to set both black and white free to develop to the full extent of their capacities, leaving each free to preserve their own cultures. And eventually, as the blacks develop, they will give, be given more government until the day they can take over their own government and we will keep ours. I have discovered since I've been in the United States that I didn't really know how complex the racial situation in my country was. I know that we are not born prejudiced, but that we accept the ready-made attitudes of others and that the social order of today conveys lessons which we absorb without conscious learning. Let me try to put this matter of prejudice in perspective. The word prejudice comes from two Latin words, prior which means before, and judicium, which means judgment. Literally, prejudice means preconceived judgment. People make preconceived judgments, become prejudiced when they do not know the facts, or when they do know the facts and do not like them. For example, when our interests conflict with that of others, we think others deserve less than we do in order to be at peace with ourselves. We think of another as inferior in order to create for ourselves a feeling of superiority. Let me tell you about a small survey I conducted in some high schools in this country. 
I asked a number of Negro girls how often white boys took them out on dates. About 90% had never been out with a white boy. The remaining 10% could count the number of times on their fingers. The experience of Negro boys was much the same. What is responsible for this segregation in unsegregated schools, where blacks and whites do everything together? Some people say the reason is economic, that the average Negro income is much less than the white. I do not think that is the only reason or the most important. I think it is the old contempt inherited from the days of slavery. No matter how widely publicized the Supreme Court decision, the basic causes of segregation still exist in ourselves. We must see that they are removed. You see how difficult Fifi makes this for me? How easy the policy of apartheid would be to work out if skin color did make one person superior to another. Marlene, let me say what needs to be said here because it is easier for me than for you. There is a fundamental difference in educational development and rate of adjustment to Western machine civilization that makes it difficult, but not impossible, for the white South African uh, native as an equal today. Why these differences exist is another problem. But it is also difficult when people use the word native as if it were synonymous with savage, primitive, and uncivilized. I recently saw an advertisement on a subway train here which read, you need not go savage for comfort. It showed a, a woman from somewhere in the East Indian Islands very scantily dressed. It was an advertisement for girls. Another example of how we are unconsciously thought that natives are primitive. And Fifi, let me say what is easier for me to say than for you. Through the ages, the whites all over the continent of Africa have believed that they are superior to the natives and therefore the natives should be kept apart from them. Also, they have not done as much as they should have to help these natives adjust to the Western civilization which they imposed on them. Too much of our policy has been based on fear of our fellow man rather than confidence in him. But people are beginning to realize that the natives are human beings, just like me and you, and that they should be given equal chance. The whole Africa is changing, white as well as black, and it's a change for the better. I would like to add this. South Africa has achieved more in the past 10 years and done more in the past 10 years than was done in all the 200 years that is past. But to get this conversation in perspective for an American audience, one of us has to say that the situation in South Africa is about a hundred times more difficult and complicated than in the most backward of the American Southern states. Thank you, Fifi. What makes it more complicated is that our problem does not exist only between whites and blacks. There are the coloreds and the Asians. What we do has repercussions all over native Africa, in the whole Arab world and all over Asia. If you think your problem with coexistence with communism is difficult, I wonder what you would do with our problem of coexistence in Johannesburg. It is the genuine feeling of all of us Africans that both blacks and whites could work peacefully together. But under existing circumstances, we find it extremely difficult. A famous educator from the Gold Coast once said, you could play all sorts of tunes on the black piano keys and all sorts of tunes on the white. But for harmony, you must use them both. Marlene, you have testified to our friendship. What would it be like if I came to Johannesburg? To that question, you know the answer, Fifi. But your question gives me a chance to say this. And this is something I've been wanting to get off my chest for weeks. I think I have a better understanding of how an American Negro feels deep inside than most of you white Americans. For three months now I have been judged by most of you, not for what I am, me, Marlene Root, an individual, but by your preconceived judgment, judgments about my country. Now, Fifi, I would like to answer your question directly. If I went to Accra, it would not be the same, and if you came to Johannesburg, it could never be the same. Through no happenings of our own, we both would be prisoners. I have always hated white South Africans violently 
because of their negrophobia. But believe me, I like the first white South African I ever saw very much. I think our stay here has proved to me that all white South Africans do not fit my stereotype of them. I recently visited the Museum of Modern Art and saw the exhibit on the family of mine. The whole range of pictures impressed me very much. But one picture impressed me greatly. It was a picture from South Africa. It showed a Negro standing behind a rock with his eyes uplifted into heaven. And under it was written, who is on my side? Who? Thank you, Marlene and Fifi, very much. <laughs>